Hey there. Hey, friend. Hey, hey Chris. It's so good How you to doing? see you. Good to, good to know you. Hi, yeah, I'm trying to see my videos off. There we go. There I am. What? There what? Go, <laughs> my favorite pastor. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. 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 Well, thank yeah. you so much. I'm going to do my yeah. intro here. Thank you so much for tuning in. You are listening to Encouraging Your Spirit, the podcast. I am your host, Chris. Today, we're so excited because we have our first guest for our Faith Conversation Series, a very good friend, known us for a long time, Van Kendall. So good. Good to be here. See you, see you. Good to be here. Yeah. Uh, so, let's see, I got some questions for you. How how is uh, Illinois treating you up there? Illinois is going well. You know, it's one of those things. You know, you grow into it. It's, it's, oh, because I, I, I said grow into it because I am not a fan of winter. <laughs> the other part, uh, you gonna get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I like my job. You know, we found we have a nice place to. Or Stan, Renee's working at the university as well. So Ooh, that yeah. part's good, but winter is never my friend. I'm always sad that it's coming. I like fall. Don't like what? Right. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. You can't get it. Well, y'all come down, y'all come back to visit now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's exciting to see you because you're selling, you know, homes. That's yeah. great. Yeah. The um, real estate. Real estate, you love it? Yeah, love it. Okay, okay. You know, helping people get a piece of the American pie. I mean, a piece. Yes, yes. You know. Definitely important for them to get that. That is. And how's uh, is Steven? Steve, good. Good. Doing well. Okay, Okay. yeah. Yeah. Trying to get through this COVID. Oh, right, yeah. COVID nineteen. <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> here, here they have us t- test uh, once a week, uh, even though we're working from home. We get right. Weekly. So. Weekly. Yeah. So you doing, y'all doing all right? We're doing all right. You know, my parents they're doing good. They're you know staying safe. You know the usual. That's good. So that's good. You be in the Texan, and your your people are good too, I suppose. Yes, thank the Lord. All right. Thank the Lord. All right, well, let's get started with our first question. Question. So I've been thinking about like oftentimes in the uh, podcast, we're talking about beliefs and what people believe. And my first question that I like to ask you is, what is the worst lie you've ever believed about anything? Oh, man. Can I talk politics? You can talk. You can be <laughs> as free or as open as you want. <laughs> go, go for it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that came to my mind was, "Who's in office now?" The president. So right, right. Go with that. It. Was a that was a big one. Right. Big lie. Right. You know. Yeah, because I think what I thought most about um, thinking about the last four years is how racism white supremacy, chaos, the lack of thought, how character is so important when you think about who you are as a person and what you Mm -hmm. stand for and how you're watching just that be totally dismantled. Just, just, and and, and it's not to the point where I'm like, I'm okay with the fact that people don't have the same agreement or ideology or belief. I get that. We differ from different perspectives, but to be disrespectful to others was just like, is that what we are? That's what right we know. Is that's, it really? That's, I mean, that's okay. Is that? <laughs> it's like the. It's like the you know our country went back yeah. to the nineteen forties fifties. Right, but I think that to me that was like the undertone of "Make America Great Again." If you're gonna yeah. be honest, I mean it was oh, yeah. like semantic words. And then I think what was also disheartening was I call them ev- evangelicals, the super saints. Super saints. <laughs> <laughs> So they are, they are family in the body of Christ. They're, they're there. I get. It. I'm not. I'm not judging. I'm just saying. Uh, just their level of complicitness in being like okay with that. And it it's like, and then it's like, you know, yes, it's, I'm excited that you know Biden is is one, and, and uh, Harris are, are elected officials for 
uh, you know, next, for, the next for the war. next term. That's that's right. really great. That's honorable. Yet to mm -hmm. see all of those states that are red. And to know that even, because this is still an example, even when President Obama was elected, it's like, right. oh, well, it's still here. <laughs> still it's here. Still, it's here. It's here. And I don't know, you know, so I guess that, that leads into the question of like, well, how is faith applicable in these times? Because, oh. Yeah. So what would you say? What would you say? Oh, that's all you had. <laughs> right. Was faith. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the, the substance of things hoped for, mm -hmm. the, the evidence of things not seen. Right. So we're hoping for what we don't see. Right. So we were hoping that mm -hmm. Biden and, and Kamala would come into place. Well, I mean, even as an African-American in this country, mm -hmm. I mean, there's still a divide. Right. You know, right. you just go through the list, economic divide social divide, divide, you know, uh, privilege divide. divide. Right. There's a, such a divide. And so, mm -hmm. you know, if anybody knows anything about faith, it's black folk, right. because- We've had to hold we, on to it. We, we hope, we right. hope divide to divide, mm -hmm. to fill that gap in is what mm -hmm. keeps us in line, is, is that faith, that right. hope yeah. that things are gonna get better. Yeah, and I was thinking about that too, because I was talking with my parents and I was like, it's really um, interesting because my parents are in their 70s Ooh. and they grew up in the 40s. So, well, I mean, they were born in the 40, the late 40s. So you're mm -hmm. talking about people that lived through segregation into integration, post King's death. And right. then so it's like, you know, and then they both went to college, um, Payne College in Augusta and they were teachers in the army. Uh, is that, that's my family background as far as career wise. Okay. And you just think about, okay, well, thinking about what you're saying about the divide and so it's like on one hand yeah black people have access to to houses you know because they own a house so you can buy a house you know you're, you're selling houses to people to all people and um you do have people that have an income they're whether they're entrepreneurs or they're working for a university or somebody's whatever that is there's mm -hmm. jobs you can have a car but that's not everybody's story. That's not every everybody's situation. And they're real people or healthcare. You know, some of us are, are able to pay for our healthcare or someone provides it through our employment. And, but there are people that we know in our communities that that's something that they have struggled and wrestled with all the time. That that is not true for them too. So it's right. like they're, they're wrestling with, with real issues that are valid to them. So it's like, okay, well, how is my situation going to get better? I, or they're, they're doing all that they can. Because I think of the friends that I had that uh, she's uh, in Florida and she's older than me, but she had worked a while doing temp jobs and then finally mm -hmm. she got a job with Kellogg. And then she wasn't oh. able to keep it because she started having health challenges. And so oh. she and her wife, I mean, they had done the traditional finance things of, you know, you save up two years worth of emergency fund but when you mm -hmm. have to use it to supplement your health care, you're back at the same, and it, right? It's like a cycle of, you know, wrestling. And then, so it's like church in it, in itself. It's like, what I find is you, you have a lot of people who are wounded in so many areas with wounds we didn't cause. Mm -hmm. So how do you stand? How would you say we stand in the gap in ministry? How do you stand in the gap with them uh, when the situation's, that are going to be ongoing because you can you can write a check, but you're going to be writing it for a while because we don't know when that's going to change. So right. there's that, and you're right. not trying to be, I guess, no. unresponsive. It, but right. I mean, we see that in ministry. I mean, at, at Church of the Holy Spirit, song they would have the benevolent fund, which was great. Right. And I definitely don't think uh, churches should not have that, but it's often feels like the needs are so great. And what would you say? Um, are should the churches do how, how what should our response well, be in ministry? Yeah, yeah. Let me let me speak to that because mm -hmm. that is in the ministry mm -hmm. of of uh, many churches that um again that ministers to non affluent neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. so you have to have a, a benevolence fund because mm -hmm. people here and then fall on hard times, mm -hmm. 
and it's always good to have you know your community your faith community to rely on if you fall in a hard time now there are mm -hmm. people that those hard times are you know sporadic once mm -hmm. every blue moon and then you right. also gonna have those that's every sunday I'm, right right you get right. this sunday <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, like wait a minute wait right but, but then the other part is uh, uh, teaching a message of of uh, faith mm -hmm. hope and in many ways self-help right you know and, and that's when you get really close to that um what do they call it the wealth gospel mm -hmm. well it's right. not necessarily a wealth gospel but you also need to uh, teach and train people how to persevere mm -hmm. how to uh faith attached to works mm -hmm. to help yourself out of mm -hmm. our times and right. economic things mm -hmm. that thing that has to be taught and encouraged right. and demonstrated in practice right you know that that's i mean so it's it's helping as well as teaching mm -hmm. right you know how to be you know how to navigate through hard times because we all look we all right. have hard times right because i was thinking about that too about how there's pain is one of those things in life is is something that no one is is able to escape we would no. love to but that's not reality right no so, we all we all got to go through that that's right. part of life that's part of our growth process mm -hmm. you know, right. A, right a baby when a baby is born and then when that first tooth comes in that's pain right Right. 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> right. It, it, and they're not the able to articulate it, but they express it through crying, and then we have to care for them as a kid. So it's right. Yeah, that's that's growth. Right. That's, right? Growth. that's growth. That is growth. Because, but that that also brings me back to that when you were talking about you know the teaching and encouraging. Because I remember, I don't remember the sermon that it was, what the title was, but I remember something that you that you said that stuck with me for years. And I think about it so much that I use it often in presentations. <laughs> okay, good. Start, good. start where you are, use what you have. Use what you, you have. Yeah, you would say that all the time. And I would think about how so much in life is like, you really are starting where you are and using what you have. Cause when you think about you're starting a business, you're working on your job, you're trying to be better in your marriage, in your life, in your finances, everywhere you're starting where you are using mm -hmm. what you have and and it doesn't necessarily come like a, a full kit it comes in pieces a little pieces. bit this week a little bit <laughs> years later right. you know and in and, and faith that's a real challenge for people yeah. wouldn't you think you know how yeah. do you start because it's like well you know I, I believe god told me to do this or i believe you know that i should be doing this or this is the way i thought my life should look and mm -hmm. it, it doesn't that fruition is not immediate and i think often in the body of christ there's this idea that okay well i'm saved okay well you know i know jesus so life should be because i meet people cool. like this that really and in my own life i can't even say it's outside it's that's a real thing and what do we what do we do you know when that's our real experience right right we you know no, uh, uh faith without works is dead mm -hmm. okay so we're constantly ha having to work right constantly having to evolve mm -hmm. you know we take you know we take two steps forward but sometimes we take a step back right but we got to right. keep taking the two steps mm -hmm. and, and over time you build it like it's like building a house mm -hmm. gotta, you gotta you start gotta the bottom. foundation right right and but see i think too that, that leads me to the point of thinking about how when you look at some of the foundations we have they're mm -hmm. not necessarily as sturdy as we thought I think there was a, a person, uh, she's a she's a podcaster and known in the Christian community mainstream. Jen Hatmaker was talking about, you know, Christianity is supposed to be uh, love, mercy, you know, just, you know, that's what it's supposed to be. But what you've seen is that that's not what it is. No. And it's, it's disheartening to Christians because that's often why people call it hypocrisy because it's like <laughs> they don't see us being Jesus. <laughs> Or the Jesus that they see, <laughs> it's not. And I'm just often, you know, perplexed with how do we how do we combat that? You know, because her Jen Hatmaker was like, I think you know we're losing people. Well, I think we continuously lose people for a lot of reasons. I often get disappointed because I feel like how who gonna go after Alba's kids? 
<laughs> you can't let them go. <laughs> go back and talk to them. Maybe not today, but don't just be like, well, that's fine. So I, I don't know. It's uh, so Let it, me tell you, you know, it, 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 we'll see. I think the, the, oh, the concept of Christianity mm -hmm. is good. Okay. Okay. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. You know, in, the, in the, all the gospels. Right. It's when you get human application, mm -hmm. uh, working on the concept, mm -hmm. that's, where the, that's where the flaws are. Right. It's, it's the human element. Right. Because humans flawed. by nature are flawed. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah. they're gonna gossip. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're gonna steal. Um, they're going to lie. Right. I mean, they're going to commit adultery. I mean, mm -hmm. they're going to embezzle mm -hmm. money. That's that's not right. It's not. It's not right. But it's going to happen. But it's going to happen. Right. So, what does the individual Christian need to do? Well, they need to pick up, you know, the good book, mm -hmm. read for themselves, mm -hmm. and anchor yourself mm -hmm. not in the human person that's standing in the pulpit or serving on this committee but anchor yourself into you know into god but that's not that's not really what i want to say into the essence mm -hmm. of what christianity is supposed to be right and then my job is to do what i'm supposed to do mm -hmm. and if i'm an example to the next person that might spark in them to do what they are supposed to do mm -hmm. see what i'm saying and then it yeah, should continue yeah. to move around the, the congregation right and then when the you know when this when the, you know the bible calls it sin when mm -hmm. the sins happen when the errors happen the mistakes happen we should be right. able to not lose our faith and lose oh god is, it doesn't right. exist right. god's not there right. because of what right. somebody did yeah and i can identify with that because i was thinking about you know we're talking about wrestling and then just the essence part that you mentioned and that made me think about um, in Genesis, I think it's 32, 22, 32, 32, when Jacob is wrestling with God. Mm. And the thing that's, that's fascinating to me about that is how God met Jacob as a wrestler because Jacob was a wrestler. And just think about how we meet God and how he, he it's a mirrored image of who we are, yet it doesn't mm -hmm. just stay that way. Would you, would you not think that, you know, as far as like that relatability of, of meeting you where you are, and and but it, but it's not in a sense that I feel like um, I'm trying to figure out where I'm about. Well, we say that there should be a change. Right, right, right. But we don't get to to we as individuals, people, for people of faith. However, we don't get to say what that transformation looks like because I often feel like in in the body of Christ, people are like, "Well, I was expecting it to be this way," but transformation <laughs> is Jesus, not. <laughs> Not hey. Chris. Because <laughs> I can look at your transformation and go, well, I, I, I don't know. But but I, well, but right. you know Jesus for yourself. You know the relationship you have or you don't have with Jesus, what it means or doesn't mean for you. You're the only person that could can articulate that. At least right. that's what I think. I could be wrong. I no, no, you spot on. You spot on because, see, who am I to judge Right. your transformation? Right. Because I'm judging you off of my expectations, right? Of you, when it, it doesn't matter about my expectation; it's God's expectations, right? Right. You see what right. I'm saying? Right. Because, and I think that too. You know, that's amazing. Because you look, you look at the biblical characters, like like Paul. I mean, right. Paul was killing people. <laughs> Paul was killed. Paul was a murderer. And, but he was the most educated Jew, right? <laughs> and 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 followed the law. He really did. Until right. he got transformed. Until and, he got transformed. Right. So and now he, and then he ended up in jail. He, right. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Wait a minute, this Paul. Is, right. Your transformation don't look good to me. You're right. You you on the on the on the uh, ship. You get your shipwrecked. You get a okay. uh, scorpion. And okay. this is this life that I'm supposed to <laughs> like. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Oh, uh, your your transformation don't look too good, brother. Right. Right. So it's just it's uh really interesting but god you, but what but god had a plan god had a plan yeah so what would you say because i mean we're talking about this how life in itself can be painful and it's wrestling what would you say in your own life has has 
what came out of your pain when you look at where you are as a person and your faith in your life? What are some good things? Ooh, we. Um, I'll tell you right now Mm -hmm. at age 48, Mm -hmm. there's some maturity in there. Mm -hmm. There's some understanding. Mm -hmm. And then there's the ability to be patient. Right. Those are the three that where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't have gone, I couldn't reach to where I'm at without having historic letdowns, Mm -hmm. pains. Mm-hmm. you know good times and bad times you know the, it's a mix mm-hmm. but it, it it wakes you up at least right now for me it's you know wait a minute let me understand what just happened you mm-hmm. know let me try to see this from you know a 360 point of view mm-hmm. or let me see what good is in a situation right you know take take the COVID 19 take COVID. Mm-hmm. right i mean you're, you're forced to look okay so what good could come out of this right we, we know it's bad. We know it's uncomfortable. I mean, I don't like wearing the mask, but I have to wear the mask. Right, right. You know, right. Um, but the good is, is I think a lot of people are a little more kinder to mm-hmm. each other. Right. People are at home. You're doing things. I'm seeing people in the park. They're doing birthday parties in the park. They're, mm-hmm. you know, we see a lot of good. People start caring from each other. So right. uh, just because something is not in our plans mm-hmm. doesn't mean good can't come from it. Right, right. Right. That's true. Mm-hmm. So how have you seen the goodness of God in your life? I'm here. You're- hey, hey. <laughs> you're alive. You're alive. <laughs> so I just feel like, you know, it's interesting. Those I remember uh, those those you remember those uh, you grew up church too. So I remember those those uh evening services where the deacons used to stand up and sing and do the prayer <laughs> service. You remember that? Yeah. You know, and they used to say such simple things. Like there was a song they used to do i don't know the melody of it to sing it but they would say you know started me on my way food on my table food you know and you and, and as a kid you'd be like that's so simple can't life be right, <laughs> be right. more Where's than it? that but in and and yet in the same sense it's like when you think about the goodness of god in in many ways it is the simple things of the fact that you're alive the fact that you have breath in your body mm. and in your lungs that there's still mm-hmm. a purpose and a plan for your life that's constantly being revealed and yet sometimes we can trash our whole present because we're looking for <laughs> something else and it's not okay. that it's not gonna come but you know just that level like you said the patience and the maturity i i think what i appreciate most with covid is the silence hmm. because before you're super busy you know i think about like work you know uh, there was conference travel but now it's like well you're not going, you're working, but you're not going to travel anywhere. Right. You're at you home. hear all your thoughts because you don't have a distraction of this, that, this. Right. And it forces you to sit with yourself, to sit with your, your real life. So <laughs> that isn't masked no. by uh, busyness. Because I think right. people can often be busy that they can miss, you know, a, a whole lot of things, which in, in right. essence, I think has, has changed church because now church it isn't always safe to have you know gatherings together so church has had to be different right. don't you think oh yeah or figure it's... out how will they reach people now uh with this going on well, well, yeah. well you... they're using the, the, the all the tools the right. zoom and the facebook and the youtube uh-huh. and i mean you really got to make a conscious effort right Log on to your Zoom or your Facebook. Go to service. <laughs> That's what you got to do. <laughs> so if all your dreams came true, what would be the hardest part of these new things? If all of my dreams came true, mm-hmm. what would be the hardest to to handle? Uh, yeah. Or to Yeah. That's a good question, Chris. I don't Okay. You, you've got me on that one because I a <laughs> all the dreams haven't come true, so I okay. don't know. Um, I think that um, I think the you know the lessons I've learned so far probably stay because okay. as you age, it, it kind of sinks in. You mm-hmm. know, maturity, mm-hmm. patience, 
and yeah. understanding, getting understanding. The Bible says it's not like getting, getting understanding. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind, if I win the lotto, mm -hmm. okay, you know, millionaire, right? Right. Then what? Then what? Because, then what? you know, you, st you still got to eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you still got to interact with people, <laughs> you know? So there's still some, some common threads mm -hmm. that we all, you know, experience, you know, yeah. you know, you still got to interact with human beings and, mm -hmm. you know, do the same thing, just mm -hmm. have a little bit more money in your bank. I guess you could go travel more, right. but if you got COVID, you can't go nowhere. Yeah. A lot of these places, the borders are like, no, not, not for you, no, which, no, which not, is interesting because it's like you were saying that a, a lot of your dreams, they haven't happened yet. So what would you say are the doors that you're trying to open? that you want to open when you look at your life. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, um, well, if we can go with a career, mm -hmm. you know, helping more people buy homes, mm -hmm. um, that's happening now, but okay. it's going to continue mm -hmm. and grow. Um, you know, me, like everybody else, I got financial mm -hmm. responsibilities. Uh, so obviously to be able to pay off bills and I have to keep paying these checks every month, right, that would be right, nice. Right. <laughs> but, but on a non, you know, monetary issue, I mean, just, uh, continue to, you know, encourage people as I see them, mm -hmm. um, um, just still be that human element mm -hmm. that's out. I mean, I could say world peace and all those things, but the Bible's already told us we'll always have wars. Yeah, you I mean, know, do I wish for it? Do I pray for it? Yeah, what? Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, just gotta do, well, do the best that I can where I'm at right now. That's right. So, what would you say are some of the biggest struggles for the church in, in, in ministry moving forward? Ooh, we, ooh, or now there's solutions that we can bring. Wow. Yeah. Oh man, you 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 hit me some gloves today, Chris. <laughs> Whoa! Um, I figure you know you're the seminarian. You know. <laughs> but that look, that's 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 tough. I and mean, here's why it's tough. Okay. okay. It depends on your context. Okay. Yeah. Depends Definitely. on your context. So, uh -huh. you know, Church of Holy Spirit song, um, it's in its context, and the church where you're going in Illinois. It's probably in its context. We all have different challenges because we're mm -hmm. different levels in different stages. Obviously, the first off the bat is being authentic to the gospel. Right. Uh, eradicating right. eradicating these isms. You know. Mm -hmm. You know, getting to the point where everybody is welcome and accepted. You mm -hmm. know, women, men gay, lesbian, black, white. I mean, until all of those categories are gone, mm -hmm. being authentic to the gospel. Because mm -hmm. right. remember, Jesus was a whosoever. Right, right. Um, Jesus. So we got to be authentic. Number two is I know for us, mm -hmm. we still want to move into a building. Right so that we're not renting so that's right. our context okay, okay. So that we we know if we can move out of the uh the rent space and get into mm -hmm. something that we own right then you know then we can have a little bit more um control of our finances right right um um so the challenge for the church is to be authentic mm -hmm. and instead of and i'm not knocking big cathedrals and big buildings mm -hmm. but it seems to me that um, there ought to be some education for the community some outreach not that there isn't out outreach but kind of have a balance yeah you would have to balance it a balance because I, yeah, I often wonder about that with uh teaching in, in church and education because it's like you realize that in church that there are people um that are you know whether it's COVID or even before COVID, they sit through the service and everything's good you know they got a job they have income you know there's no no nothing that's that's off and then you right. got other people sitting in the same church mm. driving in the same car walking however they got there that are facing real life decisions oh sure right 
or right. or better yet you know when you think about you know the the messages and just the level of authenticity that is needed you know there are people that have real needs and and i think the church could share more in personal growth share more in because it's the wholeness it's all of the parts it's the authentic part in my opinion it's the authentic <laughs> part um do I believe the buildings are still needed? Yeah, I do believe that the buildings are still needed, but I think there are also other spaces too because there are communities that will not go to the building because of stuff, again, it goes back to stuff that, that we didn't necessarily call. So there's a hesitancy of that. Right. So I think on some levels, you need the balance of both of those. They need the online part, they need the physical structure part, but they also need the authentic part and you know the what? welcoming. They need, they, it's all it's all of it. It's right. not... Right. And I think you I think you hit on a point. I think because of this COVID and our online presence with church, you know, services are online. Mm -hmm. For those individuals that have been hurt at the congregation mm -hmm. can now continue to participate mm -hmm. online until right. those wounds heal. Right. You know, at least that's at least that's an option. So right. that's a very good point. Right. Um, and I think I think churches too have to learn how to really be a safe space. You know, because people say love wins all the time. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they act and move and walk and serve in that. It because I mean here that, that's been the challenge in my own personal experience about being in Illinois. Because we went to the website this was the gaychurch.org. That might not be it, but it's something like that. We something visited like that. <laughs> we visited a lot of them. We did end up at a church is uh, Faith United Methodist Church. Okay. When we first got there, it was great. But you know how it is being a PK, the, the pastor that's there, they get sent someplace else. So then you have, oh. you know, other leadership. And it's right. not that the person there that, that is bad. I don't think that. But they're not uh, affirming because in the United Methodist Church, uh, they don't necessarily you can't in certain ones you, you they're not going to marry you though that's that's not what i'm doing Ooh, okay but they don't necessarily there's issues with ordination so it's like you're going back to a space that says love wins that says you know welcome or you have people that are nice and and things like that but mm -hmm. it's not the same as it was in church of the holy spirit song or at least that type of affirming environment finding you know a space a church hey mr cat uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to know who's talking? What you talking to? Who's this? <laughs> you know that that finding that has been a real challenge. You know we've gone to the Baptist church. Now that mm. some of them they're really cool, they're nice, they speak to you know Renee and I. They know that we're married, they know that we're gay, but in my opinion, they're not necessarily progressive. But you know, so that has been often the cha the the challenge in finding that space and then with COVID it's like I haven't I haven't been even though the praise team that I was singing on they still show up and they are having services we've not been back and right. um, so it's like finding that space and then it's also being that space so most of you know what I've done lately is like this podcast and then participating in different churches online so it's, mm -hmm. it's a different it's a different experience it's not at all you know what I thought at least for for the church type of experience, right. when I think about you know what was versus what is, and it is even about you know serving in ministry and the need to do that. Because I think you know my opinion is I think our life is ministry. Would you not? It's not just the fact that you might be a pastor, you might be an elder, you might be a your whole life. Well, you ministry. know, I was I was thinking now if now you're in Champaign, right? Right. And that's a big university right there. Right. But it's interesting, too, with that, because Jesus, maybe you need to start your church. <laughs> start my church. You know? <laughs> I don't know, man. Yes. They get people to show up. That's where we're at. <laughs> 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 because it's interesting when you meet college people and university thinkers. It, 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 it's different because it, it often feels like what I'm what I've been really trying to figure out is what is the climate here for belief and thought i'm not saying they're not a lot of churches there are mm -hmm. but it's interesting because there are some levels of progressive people there at uh, other denominations because like the, the united church of christ and the presbyterians and lutherans there's some of those there in episcopalian some of those have you know some levels of progressiveness 
Um, but it's it's just it's a really interesting climate to be completely. Right. You know, so right. it's been a journey, uh, faith wise. <laughs> oh, I can tell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The trial. So the, the trial of our faith. <laughs> the trial of our faith. It, you know, it's kind of like you get one thing and you get two things, and then it's like, no, oh, here we go. <laughs> the journey continues. That's right, what right. That's what I get. Yeah, and, it, and you know, it's probably other people that feel the same way. Right, right, right. That, in that community, and uh, that's how great things get started. Right. So but, I th- uh, yeah. So I, I really thank you for coming on today. The last thing, the question I can have is, okay. what do you want people to gain from your life? Ooh we. Um, <clears throat> I think the I, I, I like you know when Barack Obama was running for office. Mm-hmm. His slogan was, yes, we can. Right. And I've really taken that to heart. And I, I say to myself a lot, yes, I can. Mm-hmm. Yes, I can. Mm-hmm. And it's like a can-do spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever the obstacle, whatever the challenge, if you tell yourself you can, you will. Right. If you right. tell yourself you can't, you won't. Mm-hmm. But when you tell yourself you can, you empower yourself and you can move through the obstacle. And I think yeah. that's one thing I like to, you know, instill in other people, share with other people. Right. Is that all things are possible. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of how you look at it. Yeah. You know, all, although challenges might seem big and great, but mm-hmm. you know, you may have heard, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One bite at a time. <laughs> exactly. And we deal with our challenges the same way. We deal with mm-hmm. our obstacles the same way. One step at a time. Okay. And you break it down, it's easy. Mm-hmm. So if you think you can, you will. And if you think you won't. You if you think you won't, you won't. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's That's true. true. It's true. It, it does start with belief, with belief in who you think you are and your ability to know that nothing is impossible. That's not just wordplay. That's not right. just toxic positivity. <laughs> That's not ignoring your circumstances. No, you really it, it it is a true in in addition to the circumstances that are real and valid, you know all things are all things are possible. possible. Well, I thank Get you it. so much. But well, thank you. Thank Sorry, you. Focus. Oh no, you fine, you fine. But I thank you so much and and give my love to Stephen and your family and everyone at Church of the Holy Spirit. So I miss y'all to death. Okay, love, love you. Love you too. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye.